Turns out that the establishment is not very happy with the candidates that they are running who are trying to stop Bernie from getting the nomination. I mean, you are never going to hear that on mainstream TV. You will never hear that statement. Let me say it one more time because it's so foreign and yet so real. It, it appears, based on our news cycle, that the establishment is not very happy with the string of candidates that they've lined up together all to stop Bernie Sanders. It seems like the momentum to stop him has not been sufficiently uh, opposed to him in a way that would make it mathematically impossible for him to get the nomination. I know this because they're still throwing bodies at the problem. And they'll never understand that the problem is that they don't have the policies that make people excited. No, they don't. So the the best evidence of that right now, guys, is Deval Patrick. Deval Patrick may be entering the race. Now, Michael Bloomberg and Deval Patrick, both of, put both of them together, you got yourself an establishment, the last death throes of an establishment going bye-bye. You got like, you know, as, as, the, as the body's, as life leaves the body, the body's nerve endings are still twitching. You know? I know it's morbid, but it's, it's funny in a way. All right? You're not here to feel it. It's still twitching. So right now the DNC is like this. You know, it's doing that, you know, boo, you know, on you. That's what Deval Patrick is. He's the death row of a dead DNC. The, it's what Michael Bloomberg is. He's the he's the last kick of the 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 rotting the the rotting the the detritus corpse as it begins to, you know, ferment on the, on the countertop of the establishment. The establishment rotting corpse. So um, here we go. Deval Patrick, big time business guy who's often, just like Michael Bloomberg, threatened to run in a race because, well, you know, we can't let all this sellout corporatism be just stricken to white guys. We got to have our black sellouts too. We, we got to let black guys get in on the action. Here goes a clip about uh, Deval Patrick joining the race. It's a humdinger. Uh about as well as anybody, and he just wrote a piece called The Bad News for Deval Patrick on the challenges he's facing <laughs> if he enters the race. So, James, obviously the biggest problem that Deval Patrick has that Michael Bloomberg did not is money. But more importantly, yes. filing deadlines are coming to a close. He already missed Alabama. That matters yeah. for Super Tuesday delegates. Arkansas is literally in about an hour uh, here, I believe, a little less so. New Hampshire's on Friday. California, November 26th. Is Deval Patrick going to file in at least two of those four states? Uh, it looks like it. I was talking to a number of aides today. Uh, they say he's very serious. This may have appeared like a trial balloon uh, uh, last night, uh, but he is quite serious. And I talked to people who talked to him this morning. Uh, that he is quite serious about getting this race. He's not asking for people's opinion. He's asking for help and, and, and for advice and how the best right. path to move forward. But you mentioned, uh, I'm familiar with Massachusetts Democrats running. That's right. He will be the third person this cycle, Seth Moulton and Elizabeth Warren being the others. <laughs> well, we have four Californians. Uh, by the way, there was a bad, like, bad, the only reason I was reminded of that well, is because California. You know what, then? I will, I will throw in Bill Weld. If you're gonna do that, oh, there you are. All right, <laughs> so you're right. Up. <laughs> Fair enough. Although I think he's a New York resident now, but I, I just throw that out there. The last office he ran for, I think, was New York governor. Uh, he Let me moved ask back. This about... He moved back to Canton, Mass. But now we're discussing oh, Bill enough. Will. But go ahead. <laughs> Let me ask this about Governor Patrick. Um, I'm pretty familiar mm -hmm. with the various trial balloons for him running for president in the past, and each one yes. of those trial balloons was not popped by anybody on the outside. It was popped by. Deval Patrick's wife. She has been a hard no on this, almost was a hard no on him ever running for governor. He had to talk her into this. She is, she is not somebody that enjoys the public spotlight, from my understand. How did he convince her? Well, this is what we, I, I'm glad you're catching on that. I mean, one thing that's been very public is that she's been struggling a lot with health issues. And so when you looked at his statement 11 months ago in December of 2018 as to why he would not run 
in 2020. He talked, focused on what the campaign would do to his family. Now that he appears to be close to jumping in the race this time, you'd have to think the number one key cha thing that's changed has been his family. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's not lost on me that as supposedly these candidates jump in, Bloomberg and, and Patrick, because they say there's a lot of hand-wringing, it's not like there's not uh, uncertainty in this presidential race. We've seen Buttigieg has served into double digits in New Hampshire. We see movement. Amy Klobuchar's campaign seems to be on the move a little bit. I, I mean, what? I mean, Blo Bloomberg and Patrick are acting as if it's already worn, and when clearly the voters haven't. And, in a, and they both talk about Joe Biden and in the most recent New Hampshire poll, who's leading? Joe Biden. Uh, that's right. There's a lot of fluidity going on in that top tier. The, the drop of Joe Biden has been slowly happening, but the bottom has certainly not fallen off. And where it's not. So <laughs> I can't I can't listen to much more of that. I'm sorry, guys. It's just there's nothing there to listen to. I mean, OK, you got the crux of it. You get the idea, right? This is Deval Patrick character. This guy's a, a big money guy, worked in uh, Bain Capital, um, governor of Massachusetts, 07 to 15. He took over for Mitt Romney, where he succeeded Mitt Romney when Mitt Romney stepped down to get beat by Obama in 08. So, well, whatever, right? No, he's, no, because Obama beat him in 12. So, I don't know what Mitt Romney was doing between the time. He's, but anyway, <laughs> so Deval Patrick, you know, he's uh, just another corporate tool, man. This is what he is. He made a lot of money, Harvard grad school, Harvard law school. Sounds a lot like Obama, but a little bit older. Probably has an axe to grind about the fact that maybe Obama stepped in front of him, took the ball, took it to the house, you know that type of thing. Look, so so here we go. This is the but this is the thing about it that's so clear. At this point, there are, there are, there are deadlines that you need to meet in order to file to run, right? So Alabama's one. There's another key state. I think they mentioned it. I forgot what it was, but. If he doesn't file tonight, he's going to miss at least two states, which only brings to mind the fact that these folks that are getting in at this point, they're not getting in to win. Bloomberg isn't getting in to win. He's getting in to stop someone else from winning. Deval Patrick isn't getting in to win. He's getting in to stop someone else from winning. Now, they love to say they want to stop Elizabeth Warren. If you learn nothing else from watching some of my content as of late regarding Elizabeth Warren, you know that to be a big crock of dog do. You need to walk your doggy. They're getting in to stop Bernie Sanders. Elizabeth Warren is there to stop Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders is the threat. Okay, so 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 let's just keep that one hundred. That's that's really what this is all about. Um, we're gonna cover we're gonna cover polling. We're gonna cover more about the race, how it's tightening up, what have you, but. And where it's tight and where it's not tight. I'm gonna make the case for it not being tight at all, okay? I'm a, I'm gonna make the case for them just using all these smoke and mirrors to to do as Chomsky would say, manufacture your consent. But back to this guy, Deval Patrick. If they think they're gonna come in here and slide in a neoliberal business guy, and that's what's gonna do it to calm down the masses, they got another thing coming. The, the look. The toothpaste is already out the tube. Americans want health care. Americans want a, a wage increase. Americans, are, Trump gave you jobs, but you need three of them to pay your bills. Like, this is not working. You notice they talk about jobs going up. They don't talk about wages for those jobs going up. How many jobs you want, but you can't get a raise? Like, we're not keeping up with inflation. So... This is bigger. This is even bigger than Bernie Sanders. The situation in this country has created the need, just like it created the need for Donald Trump. It created a doorway for Donald Trump. It now creates a doorway for Bernie Sanders. Now, the doorway for Bernie was there last time. But anybody can come through with a populist agenda and a movement attached to it. That's who they want to stop. And that's what Deval Patrick is, is trying to do. Now, let's, I want to tackle this part because I think this is important for people to think about. The reason why Deval Patrick can even get in and muddy the waters, hurt progressive candidates like Bernie Sanders, 
Elizabeth Warren to a much lesser degree, in my opinion, is because, well, black folks, black, black media like myself are too hamstrung by finances in order to tell the truth. See, it took years for me to be in a position where I can comfortably say, screw you. Not you, but you know. Well, you know, people get mad at me as well. But, I mean, screw the DNC and screw who they're trying to push and screw the opportunities that I won't get. It took me years to be in a position where I know my kids will still be able to live indoors. To be in this business, there's a certain amount of stuff you got to do. So what I'm saying is most black media is not controlled by people like me who are going to tell the truth. So when he shows up, when Devon Patrick shows up in South Carolina talking about, I'm black like you, and he has the rhetoric of a, a Barack Obama, there may be some people who will be fooled by him. But the kicker to it all is they weren't fooled by Kamala Harris. They're not fooled by Cory Booker. I don't think Devon Patrick's going to fool him. I think. The last time black people have been fooled like this, like this was Obama. You only get one shot to be the first black president to come in and not deliver. And then make black people feel bad for even asking for stuff. So this is the deal, guys. We have to understand how the Democratic Party wins elections, how they lose elections. Deval Patrick is being put in for a reason. It's to divert attention away and, and offer a stumbling block in order to, to thwart who? Bernie Sanders. They'll say Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren is code for Bernie Sanders. When you hear them say Elizabeth Warren, what do they mean? Bernie Sanders. <clears throat> the way that we combat that is we don't give them South Carolina. We don't give them the neck of the black community. We fight back, and that's what I intend to do. That's my job. That's my purpose here. And it's your purpose as well, Wolfpack. Because we do this as a team, because we see what they're trying to do. Deval Patrick's not in this race to win this race. He's winning it to take it from the progressives. And we ain't going to let him do it. Wolfpack, stand up. Did you enjoy that content? I know you did. You got great taste, Johnson. What can I say? Become a member of the Tim Black Wolfpack today right here on YouTube or go to Patreon.com, Tim's Take Live. And you'll get free stuff, special stuff, secret stuff. Do it today. Wolfpack.